and the name of the long-awaited, much-rumored Siri speaker is, if I may have the envelope, please. Uh, HomePod. Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. I've got a quick recap for you of all the news from the WWDC keynote this morning. Uh, Tim Cook, Phil Schiller, Craig Frederighi, all the people presenting all the various new tidbits of things and we're gonna just focus mainly on the Smarter Home stuff as it relates um, obviously to Siri and HomeKit and the obvious new product that they introduced at the end. But a reminder that this video and all of our videos are made possible by our wonderful Smarter Home Life insiders over at Patreon. Their contributions help these productions literally get off the ground and allow Smarter Home Life to continue operation. You can get really cool rewards by uh, by joining up and contributing, like behind the scenes footage and special sneak, pe sneak previews of things coming up and a whole lot more. You can join the community at our quick little handy link, supportshl.com and sign up and get more information. So. Thanks very much for that, and thanks very much to everyone who is continuing to contribute to make these things possible. So on to the news. Uh, let's see. I could talk about HomeKit and all the wonderful new things that they introduced, but well, they didn't really introduce practically anything. In fact, uh, during the iOS part, it was two minutes, less than two minutes uh, spent on HomeKit they talked about that there are so many manufacturers that's more than 75 manufacturers on board with HomeKit right now and 16 no oh, well 17 device categories because they just added one speakers i think that was kind of a hint at what was coming later in the presentation speakers now enabled for whole house audio this is something that you could sort of do with iTunes on the Mac platform uh, or just iTunes in general uh, in the past and you know for the past couple of years, but now it's being brought to iOS, specifically to iOS 11. All of this software stuff that I'm talking about is going to be available in the fall. They usually do their big fall event with the iPhone and, and other hardware announcements and that's when this come to, comes out. But the developer previews and uh, so forth will be available today and they'll probably do their public beta program of the, of the various software platforms they talked about. Also, they talked about a little bit about uh, on the music side, on Apple Music and the music app, um, that you would be able to control that and even have uh, friends come over and use, um, and bring in uh, the kind of the what their wish list would be for your uh, kind of coming up playlist. So, a little bit on that, and that was it for the main HomeKit presentation. Like, that's it. There's nothing else to talk about uh, in terms of that. I was hoping for some more capabilities in the Home app itself. We really didn't see that, and I reached out to Apple with the questions on that and a few other things, and I'm going to have some more commentary, uh, kind of a lengthier episode at the end of the week. Let's talk about Siri a little bit. Um, as Google did a few weeks ago, um, Apple talked about, not really AI, but they talked about machine learning and making Siri smarter. Now, of course, Apple is focused on customer privacy, which means that practically everything that you do with Siri and all the intelligence that it can gather about what you're doing and who you are and so forth is really kept on device. They don't want it to leave the iPhone, and if it does, it's going to be anonymized, sent to Apple servers, and that's it. Encrypted and lock and key. So. The challenge that Apple faces is Siri can only be as intelligent as they make it, as you make it by interacting with it on your device. They're gonna bring that intelligence across all of your devices as Siri gets smarter. How it actually does that, they didn't say. It's part of machine learning. They introduced some machine learning um, uh, APIs for developers so that they can actually get into um, the intelligence of Siri, but they largely left a lot of it out. All right, so let's address the big elephant in the room, the HomePod, the rumored Siri speaker. It's a real thing. It's not shipping until December, so put your credit cards away, and it's gonna be US, UK, and Australia first, it's gonna come in kind of black and white, kind of textured finishes. They said cloth, it kind of looked textured, maybe kind of a both, kind of the size, or a little bit smaller than a Mac Pro, uh, kind of a shorter version of it, $349. So I don't know they're gonna be selling them in a six pack variety or a 12 pack like Amazon was with the Echo Dot last fall. 
All right, so that puts it as twice as expensive as the full-size Amazon Echo, more than twice as expensive as the Google Home, and it's an audio device. They're also really pushing this as a high-end audio device. So it's also more expensive than the entry-level product from Sonos. Touchscreen on the top, not really a touchscreen, a touch surface that's shiny, and underneath it is kind of a um, an LCD screen that then kind of has a diffuser, so you get that look of the Siri waveform as you're talking to it, but that's about it, and you're not gonna get any information from it, but you can use it to interact with it uh, on a limited basis via touch. So, high-end connected speaker, seven tweeter array, subwoofer, specially designed amps, six mic array for uh, beam forming, not just be doing beam forming for far field listening, but also for the acoustics. The device is going to automatically adapt itself to the room that you place it in. It's going to not only deliver amazing audio, it's going to adapt uh, via EQ and normalization and a whole bunch of stuff. They've got an A8 processor in it as well. So lots of tech in this. We've seen, um, I think this is the fruition of uh, the, the basically the combination of multiple years of work, obviously, of Apple's love of music, of creating wonderful devices, really going after a high-end audio experience. You know, Steve Jobs loved music as well, so that's been a big part of Apple for a long time. So now uh, they're bringing this out with the speaker. You can get multiples of these. Obviously, they would love you, Apple would love you to buy extra ones um, that will. If you place multiples in a room, they will work with each other. Again, they didn't say anything really about how they're going to um, identify the acoustics and identify the room to um, better suit the music towards it. With Apple Music on board, with your own you know, music library, you're gonna have uh, a number of additional features. We'll get to the kind of the connected speaker side of this. Obviously, Siri is on board. Obviously, you can ask all the basic things, but you're gonna be able to talk to it about what artist is playing and who is performing it and other attributes of the music that you can't do currently. And Siri, in a sense, will be a little bit more limited because Apple's not ready, or at least as of today, we'll probably get more details during a fall event announcement. Uh, as of today, it's not as advanced as, say, what's on your iOS device. You can't use it for um, uh, getting a ride from Lyft or Uber or workouts or making calls because, well, the screen isn't there. You can't interact with it. And they may be working on those integrations. I really hope they are because otherwise if they launch the device as it is today, it's going to be far behind both the Google, the Google Assistant world and the world of the Amazon Echo and probably maybe on par with or maybe a slightly behind uh, what Microsoft is doing with Cortana. So. They are really serious about this device. Um, it's gonna be a high-end audio device apparently first and sort of a Siri speaker interaction second, um, at least as it seemed to be touted and marketed today during the presentation. The basics that you can get news and weather information, the setting timers and reminders and your calendar and so forth, um, and obviously HomeKit, obviously home automation. You'll be able to do that. You'll be able to have this as a device that can give you that remote access to the outside world. If you're not at home, you'll be able to control your HomeKit home automation devices from your iOS device from outside your home. That's previously only been possible with an Apple TV third generation or later, or a, uh, an iPad dedicated um, sitting in your house. So now with one of these um, home pods, it'll give you that ability as well. Anyways, am I looking forward to it? Uh, yes, somewhat. I hope there's more details. And like I said, I reached out to Apple for more details and we'll see what they give me and the additional sessions at WWDC through the week. And I'll be back with longer commentary at the end of the week. So otherwise, that is that. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and talk about all of this smart home stuff, home automation, and everything revolving the smarter home. And if you want to see it in action, just recently launched a um, the tiny smart home tour video of the place that I live in, which is less than 400 square feet, where I live and produce the Smarter Home Life video and web series. So that's it. I'm Jody Ganzik for Smarter Home Life, and I'll see you next time.